Hi everybody, my name is Dawn and welcome to What's the Stitch, a weekly web series where I answer all of your burning questions about sewing, costuming, and cosplay. Today is going to be another project video! I was going to have this broken into two, one where I was going to detail how I constructed my Raven Queen crown and another and how I made the dress, but unfortunately all of my crown footage was just really really terrible and there was nothing that I could do to salvage or make it any better than it was so I thought I would save you the pain of watching that and just focus on how I made the dress for today. Now I based this design on a late medieval garment called a hoopland. It was worn by both men and women. It could be anywhere from knee length to floor length depending on the person and the occasion and was usually belted at the waist. Sometimes it was lined with fur for warmth and the sleeves were usually long. They could be slim and fitted or could drape down as far as the floor. Some of you may be familiar with some late medieval portraiture like the Arnolfini marriage portrait. That tends to be the most well-known of them. I have that shown beside me here. As you can see, they're both wearing one of these hoopla garments and the lady in the portrait, she's got these lovely long sleeves and they are fur lined as well. Of course, what is the point of being a spooky spooky death goddess if you're not going to have tremendously long and extra sleeves? So that is definitely what I went with for this garment. So with that being said, let us get started. As we get started, I should talk about the pattern first. What I used was period patterns number 26, high medieval hoopons for men and women. It gives you a number of lengths and sleeve and collar options so you can customize it to whatever style you like. Um, first thing that I'm going to work on here is the sleeves. Look how big they are! Oh, they're massive. They actually reach the floor and I love them. Um, start by spreading your fabric over your interlining, pinning and smoothing. Uh, pin the sleeves and cut them out. Do the same with your outer fabric. Getting around the feathers was definitely a challenge. If I were to do it again, I'd have done it a bit differently. They were a bit narrower than I wanted once they were sewn together. Uh, next time I do this, I'm going to split them into rectangles and round the corners when I sew them together instead of cutting the tapers right off. Um, for lining, I used a black faux silk from a previous project and white repurposed sheeting. The lining is a bit sheer and a bit delicate, so I personally prefer to interline it, especially because I'm going to be painting it. Pin the interlining and the lining fabric together, then stitch around the perimeter with long loose basting stitches. Now comes the really fun part, I get to paint the feathers onto the sleeve lining. I'm using a folk art color shift gloss finish metallic paint in aqua and purple flash. I wanted it to be very sheer, more of a sheen than actual color, so I watered it down a lot. It still came out pretty bright, but I really liked the final look and doing the painting was definitely my favorite part. Of 
Also, this took me a good few hours, so while I did that, I had a great time chatting with a friend of mine on Discord as I painted. Hi, Meg! After the paint is dry, we get to sew the sleeves together at the top and bottom. Right sides together, of course. Once that is done, we press the seams open with our handy dandy iron. Oh my god, there's so much pinning. What we're going to do here is attach the outer sleeves to the inner sleeves at the lower hem, that being the fancy bit. So what I start to do is pin at the top of the sleeve just to make sure that I keep the sleeve from getting twisted because imagine you go through all that work sewing along those individual dags only to have it being all twisted up inside. That would be a nightmare. And because this was filmed over several days you get to see the variation in outfits from cute sweater to it's snowing and I'm wearing pajamas so you can just deal with it couture. Okay, this is pinned now, we're gonna sew the sleeves together. This is going to take a while. I keep the edge of the fabric aligned with my presser foot to keep the hem as narrow as possible. Things I have learned while doing this, pin it in squares and sew along your dividing lines, tapering each section at the edge, bigger dag effect, less pointy. my sleeves done, now we get to start with the gown. As I did with the sleeves, I lay out my fabric and lining, smooth everything out, pin and cut out all my pieces. I also pin my collar piece on the fold, cutting two of it as well as one of medium weight iron-on interfacing.
Of course, the next step is to press all of your pieces, attach the iron-on interfacing to the collar piece, making sure that it goes on smoothly and that there aren't any creases. Then we put our collar pieces right sides together and sew. Of course, this is going to be a curved seam, so we want to clip those corners and stick along the outer curve, not quite meeting the seam to reduce bulk. Now we need to sew the gown itself together. Pin the gown pieces together, right sides together of course, and sew and do the same for your lining pieces. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end to lock your stitches. Now we're going to attach the lining to the robe itself and the collar as well. I started by marking the center of the collar and matched it to this center back seam of the lining and the robe. And of course we matched the lining and the gown together right sides together with the collar in between them. And sew along the inside of the neckline with a 5 8 inch seam and clip the inner curve. Now we get to attach the sleeves, woohoo! Again, of course, right sides together, matching the top and bottom seams, pinned around accordingly to the outside fabric only. Now, if you have a serger and don't mind the exposed seams on the inside, you can pin and sew the sleeve to the gown and the lining, but my serger is being stupid and again, unfortunately, we are still in quarantine and our sewing machine repair shops are not quite open yet, so no serging for me as I sew in these sleeves. Once this is done, I can attach the lining. I found this easier to do on my dress form, um, putting the gown onto it inside out, then I take the lining, turn in the edges, and pin them into place around the sleeve, and this I hand sewed in place. The next thing you should do at this point is to leave your garment to hang for a day or two. This lets it stretch out and helps you gain a more even hem. As you can see, 
I did not do that, which is why you can see the extra lining fabric here as I do my rolled hem. And now my Raven Queen hoopla is finished! I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm not going to tell you how long I spent swooshing around the house with those sleeves because it is way longer than it probably should have been. But honestly, it was just so comfortable and having spent the last two conventions that I went to in a corset, this was a very nice break. So it was, it was really comfortable, so I loved it. Thank you all for joining me today. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. And if you want to be notified when I post another video, please hit the bell above. Uh, all of my social media links are going to be in the description below. So if you want to join me on Twitter or Tumblr or Instagram, follow the progress of any of my projects, or just scream with me over fandom and cosplay, please, please join me. And if there's anything that you'd like to see the history of or something that you'd like to know how to make, leave a comment below and I will address it in an upcoming video. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me and I'll see you all next week. Bye.